Welcome to the Pleasantry Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, October 31st, 2021. We are in the final lesson of Unit 2, Unit 2, which is entitled Call to Praise. We are in Lesson 9. This is Deacon Barry Taylor. Our devotional reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Our background scripture taken from Psalms 147 to 150. Psalm 147 to 150 in our printed or lesson passages are taken from Psalm 141 verses 1 to 5 and Psalm 150 verses 1 to 6. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is I just want to celebrate. I just want to celebrate. Our key verse is, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That's taken from Psalm 150, verse 6a. Lesson aims, or number one, compare the reasons for and the expressions of praising God in both Psalms 149 and 150. Number two, be spiritually inspired by various types of praise, music, and hymns. And number three, praise God using the Psalms. After the introduction, our lesson has three divisions. The first is entitled, Sing with Joyful Instruments to the Music of God. That's covered between Psalm 149, verses 1 and 5. The second division is entitled, Shout with Joyful Instruments to the Melody of God. And that's covered between Psalm 150, verses 1 and 6. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is, Praise God for His Greatness. Praise God for His Greatness. And additional aims are, number one, list reasons for praising the Lord. It's very important. We want to uh, know why we praise the Lord. And number two, explain the types and arrangements of the Psalms. And number three, choose one verse from today's text to use as a praise reminder for the week ahead. Now we begin uh, Unit 2 back on October 1st, uh, and um, this unit, of course, uh, has been dedicated to uh, a call by uh, the psalmist uh, to praise, to praise God, and we are wrapping up this series of lessons with our lesson today. Um, the both commentators, uh, I think, off, offer some insightful backgrounds. Um, I'm going to just read some excerpts from a couple of them from the uh, Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. The commentator starts off, uh, of course, the lesson title again. That lesson title is, I Just Want to Celebrate. Uh, many of you may remember the 1971 song by that title I just want to celebrate by uh, Dino Ficaris and Nick Zessi and performed by the American rock band Rare Earth and uh, he comments on how that was uh, uh, just a uh, uh, an inspiration uh, or a uh, a uh, call, if you will, for generally celebrating despite the circumstances of life. Uh, then he, he talks about how that uh, call to celebration is, is really uh, meaningless uh, because it's not connected to a meaningful source of strength. What we as Christians are called to do is to praise God and to celebrate because of our connection to a source of genuine joy. And of course, that is the Lord 
Jesus Christ, that is God our Father. Uh, he says, every recorded psalm of lament, praise, or thanksgiving ends by pointing to the true source of joy, the purpose for our celebration, and the real reason to rejoice with instruments, singing, and dancing. And that basically means wholeheartedly uh, we have a reason to rejoice because of what God has done, what he has, what he is doing now, and what he has yet promised to do. And we know that all his, of his promises are yea and amen. In a way of uh, a little uh, background, uh, we are in the fifth book. If you remember when we started this series of lessons in lesson five, we pointed out that the Psalms are divided into five books. Uh, this fifth book began in Psalm 107. We got into that book a couple of weeks ago in Lesson 7. And we are wrapping up that fifth book with the last, uh, or the last five uh, Psalms, uh, which are dedicated to just praising the Lord of that book, wrap up that fifth book. And this fifth book, um, the, the, the overarching theme is uh, that God will one day make all things right. Uh, we began reading about that in Psalm um, 145. Uh, and uh, these, the fact that he is uh, uh, called for praise on the part of the psalmist. The final uh, psalm within each of the five books concludes with an extended doxology, an expression of joyful praise to the Lord. And Psalm 149 and 150, which our lesson texts are taken from, um, collectively are known as the praise conclusion to the Psalter of the whole. Uh, and that is, um, they are... Uh, the conclusion of the that book of Psalms or collection of Psalms, all the collection of Psalms, if you will. Psalm 149 and 150 have uh, three things in common. Uh, number one, they are anonymous. We're not given the author's name. Number two, they were likely composed after the rebuilding of Jerusalem's temple and wall about 515 and 444 BC respectively and number three uh, they begin and end with the phrase praise ye the Lord praise ye the Lord and that phrase unites them with a shared theme um, and actually we could look at the last five Psalms uh, and the, the themes of those last five Psalms very briefly briefly Psalm 146, the theme is the suffering have hope. Psalm 147, God cares for his people. These are the praise emphasis in these Psalms. Psalm 148, God's light is for everyone. Psalm 149, God protects his people. And Psalm 50 wraps it all up with ways to praise, ways to praise the Lord. Uh, and we know that uh, the Psalms were written in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah. Uh, and even though there were difficult times uh, after the children had returned to Judah and Jerusalem, uh, they were rejoicing in what God had done and allowing them to come back to their land uh, to begin the restoration. And that naturally resulted in praise and in a new song because God was doing, had done a new thing in their lives. So we're going to go before the throne, uh, and then we will get into our lesson text um, verse by verse. We'll probably look at the division passages and then come back and examine each verse. Father, we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word. And Lord, we pray as we do that you will inspire us, Lord, to be uh, more faithful uh, and more consistent in our praise of you, Lord. Lord, remind us 
uh, of all the things that we have to praise you for. As Psalm 103 says, that help us to not forget all of your benefits, Lord, to praise you for what you've done in our lives, beginning with calling us out of darkness into your light, Lord, for writing our names in the Lamb Book of Life, giving us your Holy Spirit, Lord, giving us your precious word, and Lord, for what you were promised to do, what you're doing currently, Lord, and that is guiding us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, empowering us to be victorious over sin, Lord. And Lord, what you yet promised to do, Lord, and that is to call us uh, out of this world, out of this life, into your glorious presence. Help us, Lord, uh, to again become more faithful in our praise. And, and Lord, let our praise be genuine, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's uh, look at our first division of the adult quarterly. Again, it's entitled, Sing with Joyful Instruments to the Music of God. And that's, again, taken from Psalm 149, verses 1 to 5. And I'm going to read that in the King James Version. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints let israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp for the lord taketh pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with salvation let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So, as we mentioned, these last two psalms begin with uh, a, um, <clears throat> a command, if you will, to praise ye the Lord. Uh, verse 1a is praise ye the Lord. And it is a plural command. Um, and it's translated in uh, two words um, in the Hebrew that are combined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the first word is hallelujah. And that is a command to praise. Uh, and the second word is ja, ja, J-A-H, uh, and that's a shortened version of Yahweh, the Hebrew name of God. He is the object of praise. So that word, hallelujah, um, it has been transliterated from the Hebrew. Uh, it's also uh, used uh, uh or pronounced, if you will, Alleluia, uh, spelled A-L-L-E-L-U-A-I. That's a Greek rendering of the same word, praise ye the Lord. A Greek word, hallelujah, spelled H-A-L-L-E-L-U-J-A-H. And also uh, transliterated from the Greek to English as Alleluia from the uh, Hebrew as hallelujah. Part B of verse one says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Again, sing uh, is also a plural command uh, and it, it occurs uh, numerous times, 15 times in the Old Testament uh, uh, of which the, in the Psalms, uh, there there's several uh, Psalms that uh, in which the hearers are commanded to sing unto the Lord. And uh, it's requesting a new song. Uh, new songs usually mark them, uh, mark rather a change in circumstances. Uh, the Hebrews that have returned from uh, Babylonian captivity have certainly had a change in circumstances and therefore, they are to sing a new song, a fresh song, uh, in praise of God for the change in their circumstances. And uh, this uh, return to Judah 
uh, from exile, from Babylonian captivity, uh, has been uh, compared to or referred to uh, as a second exodus. And, and again, it was a, certainly an occasion for great celebration. As we know, there were difficult times after they returned in building the wall in particular uh, because of the enemies around, but uh, there, was, there was joy in the, in, the, in, the, in the opportunity to come back and begin the restoration process. And Isaiah says in uh, Isaiah 42.10, Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that um, is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. So he is commanding all who know the Lord and the new things he's doing in their lives to praise the Lord and to sing a new song to the Lord. If we jump over to Isaiah 43, 19, it reads, Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the deserts. And now he is speaking to uh, Israel, but we all have wildernesses in our lives that God makes rivers in. And we are to recount those when we uh, praise the Lord with new songs, the new things that he does in our lives. We know Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 tells us, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his passions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So we are to praise God for his new mercies morning by morning. And we know also uh, revelations from heaven. You know, the saints in heaven are going to sing a new song. We can see that in Revelations 4. 9 and Revelations 14 3 maybe getting a little ahead of uh, myself in the lesson here but if we look at Revelations 5 9 and 10 it says and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy I'm speaking of the reasons that we are to uh, praise the Lord with a new song again it says and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. So speaking of the Lamb, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Now we are to praise God for the, the, the psalmist is invoking us not to take God's blessings and the new things that he does in our lives for granted, but to give him praise and to offer him praise songs for what he does. And then part C of that verse, verse 1C says, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Now this really um, is talking about the, um, the corporate setting uh, of worship. We are to praise him in a corporate setting uh, within the congregation of the believers or of saints. Now we're going to see later we're, we're to praise him in private as well, even on our beds. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Let's move to verse 2 and it says, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. So we are first to acknowledge God as our creator. Now he's speaking to Israel, but obviously he's speaking uh, to all believers as well, or the same applies to all believers. We are to rejoice in our creator. And being our creator, uh, he has established the purpose for our lives. You know, he has uh, created us for his pleasure and we are to, uh, to do what, uh, uh, is pleasing in his sight and we know uh, the Lord inhabits our praise one of the things we can do beside our obedience to his word and will is to is to be grateful for all that he does again what he's done what he's doing and for what he's yet promised to do 
when that, that verse begins with let Israel rejoice. This, this word let uh, seems to be a suggestion or maybe asking for permission, or but it's actually a command. It's, it's translated a Hebrew command. Let as in do this, okay? Um, and then it goes on to give a couple of reasons that we are to praise him. Again, first, because he, uh, he is our creator. He's the creator of all humankind, of all creation. Uh, and, uh, and then second, and then in this case of Israel in particular. And then second, uh, the Lord is the ruler of Israel. He is the true ruler. Uh, we know that they clamored for and eventually the Lord gave them an earthly king. But God intended to be their king and their ruler from the beginning of the establishment of Israel of the calling of Abraham and certainly he is our king he is our our master he is our Lord he is our sovereign uh, and we are to rejoice uh, because of that that meaning he is our protector uh, he is our um, and, 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 and will protect and provide for and sustain us as our king let's move into verse 3 let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Now, uh, this is a joyful dance. Uh, you know, I know there's some probably denominations now that prohibit uh, dancing and in fact, even music in their worship services. But we see here very clearly that uh, the psalmist wants dancing as an expression of joy to be done in the presence of the Lord in our worship and in our praise of the Lord and musical instruments are to be used uh, and he identifies two of them here the timbrel and the harp and we're going to say more about the instruments that the psalmist is uh, instructing uh, the listeners to use in praising the Lord when we get to the next psalm psalm 150 but suffice it to say at this point, the, the praising is to be boisterous, is to be loud. And not to say that it's not to be without harmony or rhythm, rhythm but it's to be unrestrained worship. So we're going to talk more about that again when we get into the next uh, passage. Verse 4 says, now that this, we're going to be talking about the reasons for praise here. The reasons for praise. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. And I'm going to read that uh, from the uh, NIV as well. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. He crowns the humble with victory. So the Lord has shown his pleasure in his people by allowing them to return from Babylonian exile and this word used uh, for beautify uh, is is a word it's translated beautify I should say from the Hebrew it's a word used for decorating the temple uh, under the approval of the Persian monarchy the Persian we can read this in Ezra chapter 6 verse 1 and then verses 13 to 15 where um, the king allowed them to go back and beautify the temple uh, that he no doubt heard so much about and he'd heard about Solomon's temple I'm sure which was one of the wonders of the world uh, in the King James uh, he uses the meek he says he will beautify the meek with salvation and that meek word meek simply means the humble uh, those who don't esteem themselves uh, uh, of a lofty or, or high, but those who recognize their position, their true station. And I've defined this uh, many times in our in-person classes in the past. Uh, true humility is recognizing who you are uh, in uh, relative to God, recognizing that you are nothing you have nothing and you can do nothing apart from God Jesus said without me you can do nothing so true humility is just recognizing our state uh, and then 
this word salvation, he's going to beautify them, the humble, with salvation, or make them beautiful, if you will, or crown them, if you will, with salvation. NIV translates it victory, but this word salvation, uh, when we're not talking about it in a spiritual sense as a uh, deliverance from sin it simply means deliverance it can be deliverance from enemies deliverance from uh, a dangerous circumstance uh, and and so he has delivered them from captivity he's brought them back to the land and again uh, given them an opportunity to begin the restoration process so that is salvation in a sense or deliverance from their from the circumstances that they've been in for some 70 years and then finally, uh, verse 5, and this is a, another call to praise here. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. The saints or the sanctified, those who are set apart uh, for God's purpose, those who have uh, place their faith in God in, in, in the Old Testament and certainly in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the New Testament and have a faith relationship with God through the Son, Jesus Christ. And he says they're to be joyful in glory. Uh, we Obviously, we know what being joyful means. It means to, uh, to celebrate, uh, to uh, enjoy the, the the sheer wonder of God's greatness uh, and 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 it is to, again uh, uh, this this joy is, is different from happiness happiness is comes from a, a word uh, hap the word hap which means uh, circumstance or a circumstance that makes you happy in this case it is not our circumstance but our happiness our joy if you will comes from our relationship with the Lord uh, knowing that he is our provider, he is our sustainer, he is our savior, uh, and he has provided for us in this life and in that which is to come throughout eternity. And this word in or phrase in glory, it says, let the saints be joyful in glory, refers to having been favored with a change in circumstance. In this case, again, from exile to people living once again in their homeland. Uh, and and this uh, really uh, comes from the Greek word that's translated from the Hebrew word doxa, from which we get the word doxology, doxology. And then finally in this verse, he said, "Sing aloud upon their beds." Now, what what what's what's that all about? Now, now see, we've talked about praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord among the saints. Okay, going back to uh, verse 1 C we are praising the Lord in a public setting or a corporate setting uh, in co among the congregation uh, in this case your bed is a private uh, location okay uh, and 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 we know that beds can be uh, have been uh, places of, 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 of a displeasure they've been places of discomfort they've been places of uh, where uh, we know the Psalms, uh, where the psalmist is talking about wetting his his bed or his pillow with tears all night, uh, and so it's it's a private place that the psalmist is invoking them to have joy, even uh, in the uh, in the wee hours of the morning when they might be otherwise restless, tossing to and fro because of something heavy on their mind. They are to be joyful instead. And recognize uh, in the midst of whatever's going on in their life that God is fully in control. I got to tell you, when I see some of the craziness, too much of the craziness that's going on in our world today and in our country, uh, I have to resign myself continuously that God's in control. I mean, God knows what's going on uh, and he's still in control no matter how out of control <laughs> things seem to be. God is still in control, and I have to comfort myself with remind by reminding myself of that. You know, you listen to the news and all the crazy things going on. Uh, you know, you have to have some faith uh, beyond that uh, that people place in men, uh, in governments, in 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 groups, and organizations, and personalities. 
uh, you have to have some hope beyond that, and that is in uh, the true and living God, again, who is the sovereign of the universe. Now we're going to move to the second division uh, from the uh, Faith uh, Pathway Adult Quarterly. And, and the other thing I, I've neglected to mention is that uh, we are, um, we want, when, when I mentioned New Song um, earlier on, we want to have a, a new appreciation for what God is doing in our lives. I mean, uh, when we were newer Christians, uh, we were maybe uh, more insensitive to the things that God does in our lives continuously that we took for granted. But as we grow in our faith and we grow in our knowledge of God and we see his working in our lives and, and our lives become more complicated even, uh, we want to be able to, to appreciate what we might have considered the, the small things that God does, uh, as well as the great things, uh, his, his loving kindness and tender mercy, the loving kindness and tender mercy that David spoke of so much we want to recognize. And that tender mercy means uh, giving attendance to the smallest things in the most gentle way, as well as uh, the larger issues of our lives. So moving into uh, the second passage, again, which is entitled, Shout with Joyful Instruments to the Melody of God. Again, reading that passage from verses 1 to, this is uh, taken from Psalm 150, verses 1 to 6, and that passage reads from the King James Version, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him with the mighty acts, with his mighty, for his mighty acts, I'm sorry. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now, as we go through uh, this passage verse by verse, we are going to learn about the where of praise. We're going to learn about the why of praise that is being called for here. We're going to learn about the how of praise. And we're going to learn about who is to praise the Lord. So as we go through, I'll make mention of those uh, questions, if you will, one word question. So beginning, we're going to talk about the setting of praise now. Verse 1a, Psalm 150, verse 1a, praise ye the Lord. This is again an imperative. Uh, it, was a, it was a command, if you will, to praise the Lord. Same as in Psalm 149, uh, 1a. 1b praise god in his sanctuary okay here again we mention uh, a location uh the sanctuary and this is an especially especially an appropriate place to praise god of course we're not limited to the sanctuary uh the hebrew word translated sanctuary occurs more than 500 times in the old testament uh, and uh, it's it's also referred to as a noun. Uh, twenty has twenty different meanings by one count according to uh, the context. Now the big picture or big idea is of one's sacredness or apartness. We are to uh, you know we're, con we're we're commanded to sanctify the Lord God in our heart. But here it's talking about having a uh, a sacred place in which we praise the Lord. That place does not have to be the sanctuary where we worship corporately, but it could be a place in your home, I believe, uh, dedicated for praise and worship and study uh, uh, and prayer. Um, so it's a sacred space in which uh, God is calling his people to worship, uh, to praise him, as well as, again, a, a place a larger worship place where he's calling his people as congregations to worship. Once he says, 
praise him in the firmament of his power. Now firmament, this word is, that's the sky. This is the place between the earth and the heaven, okay? Uh, where the stars are, it's what the uh, Hebrews believe. And, and, and it was considered the dome over the earth. But I don't think the psalmist intends for us to go up in the sky necessarily, even though we can do that in airplanes today. And I certainly am praying on planes uh, whenever I'm on them. But um, he, it, it talks about the everywhereness, if you will. In other words, we go from the sanctuary, the sacred dedicated place for praise, to everywhere. The firmament means the expanse or everywhere God is to be praised. I think that's the meaning here. And this is the firmament of his power, the firmament that he created. I mean, he created everything, uh, the sky and, and, and every place that you can go. Uh, he, he created it. So in, in other words, we're to praise him every place we might find ourselves. Let's move on to verse two. It says, praise him. This, and this deals with the why. We just dealt with the where from the sanctuary to everywhere, the firmament. Now the why, verse 2 says, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. So those are two reasons to praise him. Now we know the ancient Israelites uh, recalled when they praised the Lord. In their Psalms, very often, the mighty acts that God had done in delivering them from bondage in Egypt, from parting the Red Sea, from bringing water from rocks in the, in the wilderness for the, the cloud by day, the pillow of fire by night, for the manna, and for the clothes and shoes not wearing out, and so forth while they were in the wilderness. They have many, many mighty acts to praise him for. But he is, he is really in, uh, commanding all of us to praise him. God has done mighty things in our lives. I can think back at great things God has done in my life, even saving my life on numerous occasions. And we're to praise him for the mighty acts. And it says also his, now, now again, uh, they don't have to be miraculous. <laughs> the mighty acts can be, it can be uh, providing a way for you to pay uh, your bills if you get behind for some reason. Uh, raising you up out of a sick bed, obviously, and doing doing things that uh, one might consider uh, to be ordinary courses of life, but but we we are to praise God and to see God's hand in what He does in our lives. And then it says, uh, according to so praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Excellent means just that. Excellence, perfect. Okay, what, what are we talking about here? Now we're talking about his character, who he is. We're talking about his ethics, uh, his word. Uh, we're talking about his works. We're talking about the sum total of who he is, his knowledge, the sum total of who he is, his character. And we know that, that God is good. We know that God is good. We know that God is love. In fact, uh, he is the very definition of goodness. He's the very definition of love. And so we're to praise him for his character. And now we move into verse 3. And here we deal with the how. And this is where the hallelujah chorus comes in here. <laughs> he says, praise him with the so sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Now, um, the next three verses are going to deal with praising him with musical instruments. And there are quite a number of musical instruments mentioned throughout the psalm. Uh, here we're talking about the trumpet. And while there were metal uh, horns in those days, uh, what is most likely referred to here is the ram's horn. The ram's horn was used uh, to call people to worship. It was a signal, a signal in war. It was, uh, it was a signal in, uh, in, in a herald to herald news. But it was also to express joyous celebration. We see that an example of that in Second Samuel six fifteen. 
to express joyous celebration, the ram's horn, the shofar, was, was I believe it's called, was used. And he says, with psaltery and harp. And these are stringed instruments. Uh, I mentioned together, uh, you know, seven times in the Psalms they are, and 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 and, and they uh, the two uh, are essentially the same, uh, have the same meaning, if you will, of the uh, 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 a portable. Um, I'm not going to say uh, guitar. One one was larger than the other, if you will. Uh, it says psaltery uh, was a uh, uh, perhaps a smaller stringed instrument than and more portable than the harp was, which is a larger instrument. Uh, and this is uh, and and they had curved yokes, uh, and and they were shaped like 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 jars or the sound box, if you will, was shaped like like jars. Four uh, a verse four a says, "Praise him with the timbrel and dance." The timbrel uh, is the modern tambourine, and we know tambourines are commonly used today in worship, and it makes a lot of noise. and They and, and they were to praise him. It's it, it's a rhythmic or rhythm percussion instrument uh, with the timbrel, and and then that was to be accompanied by dancing and dances of joy, and we see that several times uh, throughout the Old Testament, uh, and and. Beginning in Exodus chapter 15, uh, verse 20. I believe we read that uh, some lessons ago uh, when Miriam and the ladies uh, danced. Uh, Moses, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Moses, this is after they came through the Red Sea. Uh, and uh, Moses sang a song, and then they, uh, Miriam and the ladies chimed in with instruments and dancing. Uh, and we see it also in uh, Psalm 149.3, which we covered. Now, uh, this again uh, was uh, the the hearers of the psalm were commanded to use these instruments in praising in the worship and praise of God. Part B of four says, "Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs." And here we're talking about uh, uh, collectively the. Uh, stringed instruments such as the psaltery and the harp that we've already mentioned there may have been other stringed instruments as well a violin like violins or violas or cellos but uh and uh, all the stringed instruments are called for here they're to praise him with with all the stringed instruments which means what there's no string instrument that uh we shouldn't praise the lord with okay we can make a joyful noise with it we are to use it all right verse 5 reads praise him upon the loud cymbals praise him upon the high sounding cymbals now we know what cymbals are cymbals are percussion instruments that are that would be struck together to make a sound and they would make a loud sound he says high sounding uh, and that occurs several times five times in the Psalms it means really to uh, to make a loud noise. In other words, this celebration was not to be quiet. Uh, it was not to be uh, uh, meditative, if you will, a silent meditative type of a praise, but it was to be uh, uh, unrestrained, uh, loud. Not to say it was to be a cacophony of noise, uh, but it was to be exuberant. It was to be uh, again, uh, something that that people could could hear from a distance, and 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 we know that's, that 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 joy expressed that way can be contagious, and certainly it was to incite others, uh, certainly other believers, uh, to praise to open their hearts and praise the Lord as well. Now, one of the one of the commentators mentioned the several instruments that were used. Uh, mentioned throughout the Psalms uh, in praise and just really quickly the trumpet, harp, psaltery or viola, timbrel, strings, organ, cymbal, cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer 
and, and those were mentioned at various places uh, and again were to be used and I I'm, I'm old enough to remember when we just used the piano and the organ in the church uh, it has been uh, a joy uh, over the last many years uh, to uh, praise the Lord uh, in in services where guitars and drums are used as well and even saxophones uh, and violins are used on occasion uh, all in a very uh, worshipful uh, harmonic uh, way uh, that gives glory to God so I, I've been I've been delighted to have lived long enough to see the change in our worship in the, the congregation that I belong to now uh, and then finally verse 6 says let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise ye the Lord now breath was the first sign of life at the creation certainly of man God breathed into the man the breath of life Genesis 2 7 and man became a living soul now he's not just restricting uh, this call to worship to to men and women uh, boys and girls but everything that has breath that means every creature that draws breath and we know fish even though they don't draw air or oxygen from the air they get it from the water but everything that has breath uh, in the that, that's a broader call uh, is to praise God for what he's done what he's doing and and for what he's yet promised to do and obviously uh, we uh, men and women are the only creatures that are able to fully appreciate or not fully to appreciate to some degree what God is and I pray uh, time and again for God to help me to more fully appreciate what he's doing to see uh, his blessings uh, more clearly not to forget all his benefits as Psalm 103 um, tells us to do and speaking of Psalm 102 uh, we're going to wrap up uh, our lesson in going to Psalm 103 verse 22 where there is uh, again uh, uh, the readers uh, are there's an uh, are evoked to praise the Lord not just the readers let's turn to that and if you if you're not familiar with the psalm this is one of the most beautiful psalms in the Psalter and I had committed it to memory at one point and I really need to refresh my memory of it <clears throat> but the, it ends with a crescendo I'm gonna back up to uh, verse 20 where the psalmist says bless the Lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word bless ye the Lord all ye hosts ye ministers of his that do his pleasure and then verse 22 says bless the Lord all his work in all places of his dominion bless the Lord O my soul so we pray that God has given us a new through this lesson a new appreciation for the importance of of uh, of unrestrained uh, joyful uh, praise of the Lord um, and, and, and as we not not doing it mindlessly or robotically but understanding why we're praising him to recall his many blessings uh, to thank him for what he's done obviously for him keeping us day by day what waking us every morning with new mercies and then for what he's yet promised to do he's promised us ultimately deliverance from this uh, this sinful world uh, and to, for, to uh, promise us uh, a presence in his glory in a, pre a future rather an eternity in his presence and in his glory so we want to praise him for that and, uh, and father we do thank you again for um, Lord reminding us uh, how you delight in our praise and Lord we pray that again you would put it in our hearts Lord to remember to praise you uh, without restraint spontaneously Lord with genuine joy Lord recognizing 
what you've done, who you are, what you've yet promised to do, Lord. Recognizing how much you love us, Lord, and your promise uh, to bless us in every needed way, Lord. And, and for your word that says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how silly not with him freely give us all things. And Lord, we know that's not everything that we desire, but it's everything that we need. And we know that you would give us everything that we ask for that is according to your will, Lord, because you've promised to do that, Lord. So we just ask your blessings upon all the hearers and all the families represented. And we ask your blessings, Lord, until we, we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.